ripping the band-aid off Bethesda's ruining Fallout. By saying this, a lot of you just went, yeah, and the sky is blue, while the majority of others just went, erm, what are you talking about? Have you seen the overall sales and recent Steam charts and recent popularity? So to explain what I'm saying, I need to acknowledge that at one point in time, Bethesda saved Fallout. When the company Interplay slash Black Isle that made the first two games went bankrupt, Bethesda took the IP under its wing and created Fallout 3, which was a lot of people's entry to the series. Then in 2015, it happened again on the PS4 and Xbox One with Fallout 4, bringing an entire new generation to something even more accessible than Fallout 3, which was even more accessible than Fallout 2. And then later you got to watch a bunch of fun videos about Fallout 76. And now in 2024, a new Fallout TV show has boosted up all the games and brought people who didn't even play video games to Fallout. Fallout in general is popular, but is now only so popular due to momentum. The momentum of a new show, but when that dust settled, what was revealed is now a big wasteland. Ironically, a wasteland for Fallout. So despite the big numbers and everyone playing the games again, Bethesda is still ruining Fallout right now, in real time. Not because they made games that some people don't like, but even more cynical reasons. Greed, jealousy, entitlement. All behind the coddling of laziness, pride, and hypocrisy. Defended by the veil of success, love, and validation. And if someone doesn't interfere soon, the IP will be consumed by the sands of the wasteland. So let's go down this rabbit hole of why Bethesda is ruining Fallout. Also subscribe. Todd said that if we get enough of these, we might get a new Vegas 2. I, I promise. That's what he said. Fallout's never been more popular. Min, 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 you guys min, min, min. are fucking incompetent. Let me ask a question. Who is the face of Activision? Who is the face of EA? Who is the face of Blizzard that isn't in jail? Yes, yes, it's Luka Doncic, you're all correct. Most game companies are ran by shadow people who stack billions and billions while sucking the blood of children. But then there's studios where the main character is the guy you just want to sit down with and have a beautiful cup of coffee. Miyazaki, Hideo Kojima, Gabe Newell when he used to make video games instead of spamming out Steam sales so that he could go on vacation. Also, I think the TF2 community is pretty unhappy with him. And up there is cute little Todd Howard. Behind that leather jacket and false promises is an awkward hunk of love. And it's just a decoy for the real shadow people behind him. Todd is a guy that can constantly make bad decisions, but when you see him in the flesh, you kind of feel bad for the guy because he's just a little dork. If you want an example of this, look at when he got scared at IGN and didn't believe that the Fallout show was a 9 of 10 at first. Because before that, everyone loved his passion project for two weeks before ripping it to shreds and putting him back in the bad boy corner again. I believe that Todd Howard was once a great game director. He had that humble Mike Wazowski background. A guy who was persistent and had to work hard to get to where he is. He was turned down for Bethesda and told to finish school first. Where he then finished school and got told to kick rocks because there's no more jobs available. And after persistence, he finally got to work at the company and climbed his way up the ranks. He failed and succeeded multiple times. But as we've now seen through the years, that once humble Michael Scott has now turned to Mr. O'Hare. The irritating thing about Todd and Bethesda is that they're also the luckiest game developers of all time. They're the only studio that constantly gets bailed out of mediocrity having it be swept under the rug. And I used to think this was only a recent Bethesda thing, but with hindsight observation, this has always happened. Valve games have stood the test of time from groundbreaking mechanics and innovation, with the biggest critique being that they don't make games anymore because of the success of Steam. And in the case of TF2 recently, value monetization more than their current online games. But as we saw recently with a game like Half-Life Alex, Valve still makes games when they want to innovate and push new technologies. Bethesda is not Valve. They are constantly being bested by other studios and have no competition which has made them incredibly stubborn and borderline delusional. Bethesda in their prime was a hungry and driven game studio, wanting to make the best action adventure games with some of those old RPG elements. Elder Scrolls was an original IP that was constantly evolving. Daggerfall, Morrowind, Oblivion, with Oblivion being a big step up from Morrowind. While Bethesda was going on this run, Interplay's role-playing games like Baldur's Gate and Fallout were collecting dust. Since gaming was evolving, and Interplay saw no profitability making look-down-in-depth RPG games. But then comes in a savior. Todd Howard, who likes the look of Fallout and the aesthetic of Fallout, and said by him himself, if this thing's just gonna collect dust, let me play with it. A bunch of the people who run the company knew the people at Interplay, and we, we pestered him and pestered him, like, are you guys using Fallout? They weren't doing anything with it. Keep this clip saved in the back of your brain because it's really funny with hindsight. I love those dear hearts. 
the Archduke assassination of Bethesda, being the first domino to what's wrong with them now, but at the time this looked like the beginning of a money glitch. After getting the IP, follow through was made from the imagination of Bethesda, then quickly became the studio's most successful game ever. Gamers loved the exploration, the VAT system, and the gore. To the mainstream, it was the first ever post-apocalyptic game in the accessible format. It was a world that you could get distracted in for hours, that had this illusion of choice and scale. It wasn't intimidating or unappealing to the masses like the first two Fallout games, but there was objectively a lack of quality in its RPG elements. Fallout 1 and 2 are real RPG games, and that was the main appeal of Fallout before Bethesda took over, where then Fallout became a more linear RPG, more fascinated with exploration and action. So that created a vocal critique to Bethesda, which at the time was tossing a stone at the guy who ruled the world. Fallout had a monopoly on the RPG genre. When people weren't playing Halo 3 for multiplayer or Gears of War, they were playing Fallout 3 for their single player itch. Not many knew the quality of a game like Fallout 2, so who cares if Fallout 3 is linear and poorly written? It's the only game I've played, and with no competition, it's fun to use vats and explore the wasteland. And people loved it. Bethesda was revered and Todd Howard was a new god. So Todd sat down and thought to himself, let's make Fallout 3, but in Elder Scrolls. And ZeniMax didn't like that. Fallout was a hit, so why go off the grid and make a game and have the IP collect dust? And luckily, there was people who wanted to make a Fallout game and had some experience with the IP. Originally, an expansion was going to get outsourced for Fallout 3 while Skyrim was being made, but Todd Howard convinced ZeniMax to make an entire new Fallout game, made by Obsidian Entertainment, which was a studio that had a lot of people that previously worked for Interplay and were on the development team for Fallout 2. New Vegas was made from the skeleton of Interplay's Fallout 3 that was scrapped due to the company's financial struggle. And before New Vegas, they made Knights of the Old Republic too. That was rushed, so they didn't have time to fully scale that game to their vision, but still pulled it off. Luckily, that will never happen again, right? Yippee! There'll be no Behind the minds of Josh Sawyer, John Gonzalez, Chris Avalon, Fergus Urquhart, and many more came Fallout New Vegas, a game made for the in-between period of Skyrim with an 18-month window. This game even existing is not only impressive, but also displays the massive problem with Bethesda. Obsidian's tight deadlines show that even under pressure, if you could write something good and really love what you're making, that everything else will fall into place. And the stuff that doesn't fall into place will be viewed forever with the lens of, what would this game be like if they had three years to make it? New Vegas is made with the consideration of Fallout 3. The developers even say that the Fallout 3 formula is why the mainstream enjoy Fallout. So instead of discarding Bethesda's format and game style, their goal was to improve everything from the third game and build upon it, with the limited time they had. Gunplay, customization, skill trees, roleplay, writing, Fallout New Vegas is a collaboration of Fallout 2 and 3. Taking the care of fun and roleplay from Black Isle, and collaborating with the fun and wonder of Bethesda, New Vegas is a true gem that mastered the Fallout style, becoming the poster boy of what an RPG should be, and it wasn't even made to its full potential due to the crunch and tight deadline. There's so many video essays and breakdowns you can watch going over the incredible details of New Vegas, but even playing it for yourself and committing to it, you will quickly see that New Vegas is a game that has never been replicated again. Because instead of choosing to be pretty and shiny on the outside, they instead chose to be shiny and pretty on the inside, which is why Bethesda hates this game. With the revisionism of the Fallout fanbase, some are attempting to rewrite history and gaslight the narrative around New Vegas. That Todd doesn't hate the game, that he actually loves the game, that all Fallouts are masterpieces in their own way. And while the idea of holding hands and singing Kumbaya around the fire is beautiful and brings a single tear to my eye, I live in a place called reality, where we don't always shed a single tear at every rainbow. Todd has recently praised New Vegas. It would make sense that after 14 years, he would now praise the game in the spotlight, since he's using its identity as his new meat puppet to make people get excited after years of downplaying it. The creator of New Vegas has stayed I don't feel like it's healthy for me to be really invested in something I have no control over. This was after he was asked about Fallout New Vegas' role in the Fallout show. Also, the writer of New Vegas is not happy about certain decisions that have been made, and has been vocally critiquing the show as well. So to state that there's a two-way street of friendship and respect just makes no sense. Obsidian has been getting screwed over by Bethesda for a while. Because of the big crunch, New Vegas was insanely buggy at launch and had trouble running on that current generation's hardware. If only had an extra year like Starfield to patch bugs, because that was clearly the only problem that game had. So because of this rough launch, its critic scores were affected, which put them one point below the required score to get their bonus. Yes, the bonus for the team that crunched this game in 18 months was in the hands of subjective reviewers that didn't get to meet the bonus requirement due to the rush launch that made it lower in scores. It's almost like the game was rigged from the start. So yeah, fuck that bonus. The game didn't get as high of scores as Fallout 3, but the noise and praise were higher than Fallout 3 for sure. The vast details and choice of New Vegas made Fallout 3 its bitch. A real RPG, a game where you could actually carve out your destiny 
Destiny, a game with real consequences and choices, while also being a more in-depth, fun shooter. New Vegas quickly became the poster child for what a video game should be, and its humble roots even made it more beloved in history. What these guys did in 18 months, most people can't even do today with four years. I like Cyberpunk as well, but like Jesus, imagine that budget and time in these guys' hands. With the success, there was a change in Todd. The little nerd who loved video games got angry. He got bitter. He stuck his neck out for this thing to be made. He originally wanted Interplay to share the IP so that Bethesda could have fun. Well, now he did the same thing back and got upstaged. Then after this, Todd released Skyrim, and it became the biggest game of all time. Skyrim was the peak of Bethesda style. Skyrim scaled back even more from Fallout 3 in terms of roleplay and doubled down on the vision of being an action RPG. And in the result of that, Skyrim was a huge success. It's weird looking at Skyrim from a modern viewpoint because while Skyrim truly changed gaming, Bethesda also learned all the wrong lessons from its success. Skyrim is a really bad RPG, especially compared to KOTOR, KOTOR 2, New Vegas, but it was the spark of action adventure games. At the time, Skyrim was a lot of people's first time ever really feeling like they were in a fantasy world that they could explore and be powerful in. Similar to how people felt with Fallout 3. Nowadays, the combat is jank, the skill tree is overpowered, making you a god with no consequence, and yeah, the RPG is down to pick A or B side and eventually everything falls into place. But compared to Fallout 3, New Vegas, and even Red Dead 1 to an extent, it was magical, pretty, and huge. I quoted this from Joseph Anderson in my Starfield video, but Skyrim is a shallow puddle, but it's just so much fun to splash in. I look at Skyrim with cynicism now, because as good as Skyrim was, it's aged and everybody has done something better than that game since. Skyrim was way more successful and popular than Red Dead 1, but Rockstar ended up making Red Dead 2, which some say is the most immersive open world game of all time. That Dark Souls game that came out in 2011, yeah, that studio made Elden Ring. The point is that there's been a lot of evolution in gaming since then, and while studios have been upping their A game, Bethesda has been on nothing but a downfall. After the success of Skyrim, Bethesda got an ego. Todd made the most successful game ever by doubling down on what people said he was doing wrong after the comparison of New Vegas and Fallout 3. So he was going to do what he did before again and trust his gut. He was going to bring that Skyrim mindset to Fallout again, scale back even more on that RPG element and get even more linear. They're gonna stay on the same engine, they're gonna do what others can't. They're gonna make a Bethesda game. Because Bethesda games are something no one else can make but Bethesda. Bethesda became secluded. Instead of spreading out and being charitable, giving people cracks at different visions under their IPs like they once did, they became a studio of doubling down on their independent visions. A huge complaint of New Vegas today is that it feels janky and old. And yeah, that's true. God willing, you will not leave this valley. It even felt old in 2010. And since New Vegas, Bethesda and Obsidian haven't collaborated. So Obsidian never got to make a more modern game, which also makes no sense. Even with Fallout New Vegas not selling as much as 3, the game is still revered as the greatest RPG of all time, and still sold well for Bethesda standards. The gap between Skyrim and Fallout 4 would be from 2011 to 2015. In the timeline, Skyrim was just recently the biggest game ever. Bethesda had clout and cash, and now Bethesda had time. And between those four years was radio silence. Even from a business standpoint, it makes no sense. In the past, ZeniMax was asking for more Fallout when Fallout 3 was a success. So that's why New Vegas was on that crunch to chase that high, which it did. And then after New Vegas, you have Skyrim being the biggest game ever. And being the biggest game ever is followed by no urgency or pursuit. It has to be because Obsidian didn't want to do it anymore, right? After that crunch and getting fucked over on that bonus, they were like, nah, let's not, let's not do it anymore. Nope. Chris Avalon, the writer for New Vegas, states that New Vegas 2 was pitched and denied. When asked why Bethesda Bethesda said no, he said that that question has kept him awake at nights for years, and then states that the team repeatedly asked to do an Elder Scrolls spinoff in the style of Fallout New Vegas, or anything in the Fallout world for years, to then be told nope again. He even pitched it the same way. So this brings up boogeyman claims of why Obsidian didn't work on anything for Bethesda. Claim 1. The game being buggy brought a negative reputation. This is bullshit. Bethesda games have always had the reputation of being notoriously buggy. Skyrim had a buggy launch, and even years later we'd see this again with Fallout 4 and 76. And even besides the bugs, we've seen a game like Starfield that was almost spotless still be disliked. It's a shadow claim that I don't believe. It objectively makes no sense. In ZeniMax's interest of making more money, they benefit by having more games to make more money. Fallout New Vegas was revered as one of the greatest games of all time, so it wouldn't even be a problem in terms of quality or care. And now you have a four-year window of nothing going on, and when you had this exact situation and worked the first time, New Vegas The Gap Game was a hit, then Skyrim After was your biggest hit. For ZeniMax to now stop production at the high of Bethesda just makes no sense. It's why I know Bethesda had to intervene. Todd's ego of being a sore winner has now hoarded the Fallout IP and the Elder Scrolls IP, making Bethesda the core developers of both from now on. I think Todd did this to avoid Obsidian making any more games, to avoid Obsidian making an Elder Scrolls New Vegas to their Skyrim, so it couldn't once again shit on their parade. But hey, if you're going to be a goblin with your IPs, just don't mess it up.
Fallout 4 was a mixed win. I brought this up in my Starfield video. Fallout 4 made it so that Fallout played more like a modern shooter that isn't from 2005. The gunplay was pretty ass compared to other games at the time, but it's still real gunplay. The world was fun to walk around, you're able to loot, craft, and explore. The plot was horrible, the world building was bad, and the RPG was the worst it's ever been. The launch was also buggy and everything releasing around it was way better. Once again, those assholes who made Dark Souls in 2011, yeah, they just made Bloodborne, you know, one of the greatest games of all time. Witcher 3 came out, also a really good game. But, besides all this, Fallout 4 sold well. It was the best launch for Bethesda ever, actually. Overall, Skyrim is still on top on sales, but in that small release window, Fallout 4 skyrocketed off of anticipation alone. The last Fallout game was five years prior, not including New Vegas, 7. But this is when Todd was flying too close to the sun, because in doing so, it regressed a lot from even Skyrim, which already regressed from previous games. It was too linear and dumb, without care outside of cosplay. So once again, like Fallout 3, it was on paper a success, selling 13.5 million copies being the most successful in the Fallout series. Fallout 76 was a colossal failure. The pride and lies of Todd catched up to him. He couldn't run from this one. Where New Vegas was a rush game made with love, Fallout 76 was a rush game made with greed. Like Elder Scrolls, instead of letting someone else ever try to upstage them again, they wanted to keep the IP alive via live service. They scanned people, made false promises, and years later tried to rewrite history. Because if something doesn't work at Bethesda, it's never a swing and a miss, it's just that people don't get it yet. So, after dropping the ball, what does Bethesda do? Do they finally give in, stop hoarding the IPs, and work on their next game Starfield while a new Elder Scrolls or Fallout gets co-developed? Nope. They announced their next Elder Scrolls game in 2018, then they don't release their next game till 2023, and then they start working on that game from 2018 after their 2023 game. And guess what? That 2023 game is outdated. It's worse in RPG mechanics from Fallout 4, and also worse in gameplay. Bethesda games can be enjoyed by people, that's okay, they're dumbed down to be accessible, but because they're so dumbed down, makes them not great games. So if their games are not amazing, why the fuck are they gatekeeping them so hard? From the time of Fallout 4 to Starfield, From Software released Bloodborne, Bloodborne DLC, Dark Souls 3, Dark Souls 3 DLC, a Dark Souls 1 remake, Sekiro, Elden Ring, DLCs to both of those. It's just Fallout 4 was so old and shit, and Starfield was old and shit. I know studios have a reputation of cracking the whip on developers, but at least after those cracks and brutality, you get a Red Dead Redemption 2, or a Halo 2, or even a New Vegas. Yeah, GTA 6 took forever, and it looks great, and will most likely be amazing because Rockstar hasn't dropped the ball yet on their single player campaigns, so they have the right to go ghost mode and have it be okay because when they come back you could trust it. Starfield is not a game that takes 5 years to make, and that's being generous counting 76 that was made with tape and spit. 8 years to work on this piece of shit game? From Skyrim it's been a downhill slope. Each game is getting worse and now you want us to be happy that Elder Scrolls 6 is getting made on that same old ass engine with a little bit of polish that still has the NPCs being dead on the inside. I have a video about Starfield, but Bethesda doesn't make good enough games to be this greedy. In 2021, Microsoft bought ZeniMax Media, so they own Bethesda as a publisher even though Bethesda operates as its own studio. The purchase was for $7.5 billion. Now Bethesda is owned by Microsoft, Starfield is a bomb, your next Elder Scrolls game isn't going to be out for like another 5 years, so what the hell is happening with Fallout? Fallout in the current conditions is truly screwed, but you don't think so because Todd gets lucky. He always gets lucky. The Fallout show came out and now Fallout is popular. Everyone was playing the games, getting that fix. Now 2015 is the new 2024. And now the West belongs to Todd. Now New Vegas, as an aesthetic, belongs to Todd. But where are the games? While everyone's sucking off Fallout 4 again, mind wiping the history of Fallout 76, acting like it's a great game now, it's surprising no one sat down and questioned for a second, why hasn't there been a new RPG since like 2015? And as I've been breaking it down, it's because Bethesda is insecure and are sore winners, and they always get away with it. Even now, how flawed Fallout 4 is, they release a season of a show and all that history of Bethesda's pettiness is wiped away. The failure of Starfield is wiped away. Todd, you aren't a Kanye West album that everyone hates because they aren't ready for. You're a guy who constantly gets bailed out after wasting years making shitty video games while having IPs collect dust, like the CEO guy from Smiling Friends, because you fear that you will get upstaged by people who are better at making games than you, like what happened so long ago with Fallout New Vegas. The Fallout hype is now dead, and you aren't getting an Elder Scrolls game for five years. Then after that, they're gonna have to make a new engine because no way you could get away with it again. Hell, they might be doing that now and Elder Scrolls 6 might take like seven years. Then after that, you're gonna have to wait for another Fallout game, which is gonna be like another five years. So eyeballing it, it's gonna take 12 years to get the next entry to Fallout, which will probably not be good because the head of this Bethesda ship is stubborn, egotistical, and lives off of doubling down on critiques against him to prove a point. While every other studio around him is doing better stuff, while this guy only relies on getting bailed out by fan revisionism. Even CD Projekt Red, after a crash and burn, still made a fun 
action adventure game that also has bad RPG. While Bethesda were making Starfield, though still has loading screens, dead planets, and outdated combat, while doubling down and arguing that people were wrong in Steam reviews. You may need to upgrade your PC for this game, but it's got a lot of great stuff going on in it, and the fans are responding awesome. From 2015 to now, you could have had two four-year developed Fallout games on the same old-ass Fallout 4 engine and having them be hits because if New Vegas proved anything from 3, you can have both action, fun, and good stories. You don't only have to do one. And if something is great enough in concept, people will brush off its package. Bethesda is truly a gaming cancer. These are not the same guys who made Skyrim and the only reason people like Fallout 4 because nothing else has been released on that same engine besides an MMO to compare it to. Microsoft, you have proven to be a spineless, money-hungry company, so wake the fuck up. People like Fallout. New Vegas as an in-between game was a success. I know they own Obsidian. It doesn't even have to be them. You can make a new team and rehire the competent people that were left to rot by Bethesda and make a new game. By doing that, people get a new game and you get money. Bethesda does not make good enough games to be such entitled pricks about their IPs, especially for one they didn't originally create, which is Fallout. Fallout 3 was made because it was people wanting to put a spin on something they enjoyed. And Bethesda gave the same gratitude back. And then when Obsidian did it better, they got insecure and wanted to prove that they make better video games. And I'm not let anybody have access to that IP sense. Nobody wins. If you like Bethesda's Fallout games, you get no Fallout games by them being elitist. Microsoft, after forking $7 billion and having Fallout now be in the mainstream, gets no money. And Bethesda already knows this. They could have been doing something years ago. But keep releasing patches nine years later that breaks every mod. Keep getting outclassed by modders making passion projects. End of the day, they're winning. They get to play with the meat puppet of something created with love while never sharing again themselves. And they get to be revered for it. I have no love for Bethesda. I think Bethesda sucks and the only way for that company to survive is to get rid of that upper office. But Microsoft is incompetent, so most likely nothing will happen, and we will continue the Bethesda cycle where the next Elder Scrolls gets a reality check when a lot of people don't like it, and Microsoft realizes that the hood has moved on to FromSoft games. And hopefully they make a change then. But let's be honest, they probably won't. This video was brought to you by the New Vegas Enjoyers. Subscribe for more Skippy Whippy Yapping. Thank you to the Patreons who support the channel.